grab you a cheeseburger and a milkshake. We're talking about Riverdale. This is a review for Riverdale, Chapter 2, Touch of Evil. So I did enjoy tonight's episode. Uh, I thought it was pretty good. You know, we got to see some more of some characters we didn't get to see too much of in the pilot episode. They kept the storylines going and kept you interested to the end of the, the episode and interested for the next one. Uh, like I said, it was good. It wasn't anything spectacular. Uh, two episodes in, I mean, I don't know what the best episodes of uh, Riverdale, Riverdale are going to be so far. So, I don't know, I guess the pilot. But uh, we'll, we'll have to see with that. But let's just get into tonight's episode. And, you know, they heard the gunshot, and now he's thinking about, you know, Jason Blossom, how he's dead, and he's just kind of racked with guilt about how he didn't say anything. So he decides to go for a run in the middle of the night, not wearing his shirt. And, of course, he goes to Mrs. Grundy. You know, this is the teacher we had the affair with. You know, you, you think he'd want to keep it a secret. He's going to show up at her house without his shirt on in the middle of the night. Kind of wonder where that was going. And much to my surprise, they didn't get it on like I thought they would. But basically, Archie's like, I got to tell someone. I got to tell someone. She's like, no, no, no. And that kind of sets up basically where their story was going. It's, you know, this kind of back and forth where Archie's like, he's so racked with guilt. And he's got to tell everyone. And Mrs. Grundy wants to keep it a secret because she'll get arrested and he'll get expelled. Which I was like, would he? <laughs> Seems to me he'd be in the clear. You know, she's the one who'd get put on the sex offenders list and charged a statutory rape and all that jazz. I mean, he was like, oh, Archie, how could you? And then you had people like Reggie Mann like, yeah, bro. You know, it's not going to make his life any worse, except with maybe Betty and Veronica. We'll get into that. But yeah, at the end of the episode, it comes irrelevant because he was going to go and tell the truth. But then some other stuff happens, and we'll get into that. Okay, so, on to the Betty, Veronica, and Archie Triangle. And, um, with that, we see that Betty, she's not taking Archie's calls, which is why, I guess, one of the reasons he ran out shirt was to go see Mrs. Grundy. And, you know, he's trying to make it better, better with her, and Veronica's trying to make it better with, uh, you know, Betty... And Betty's like, yeah, okay, I guess I forgive you. And then, you know, out of the blue, she's listening to this song. She really gives it some thought. She's like, I can't, I can't be around either one of you. A little later, she gets into a pissing contest with Veronica about it. And she's like, you shouldn't have gone in the closet with him. And uh, Veronica comes out with, well, he would have went with Cheryl. I thought that was, you know, I was protecting you. And it's like, <laughs> it's, it's kind of like what I said. I think she would have been better if she'd let uh, Cheryl take Archie into the closet. So that way the friendship could have stayed together, at least. But she, she didn't do that, and now Betty's pissed at her, of course. And they brought up, well, Archie doesn't have anything to apologize for. But I was like, fuck off with that. Of course he does. He fucking knew. That Betty was in love with him at that moment because she had only told him, you know, maybe an hour before. And he goes into the closet with Veronica so he can get over Mrs. Grundy, I might add. And my attitude was, dude, his op he didn't have the option of walking away? Fucking A. <laughs> well, at the end of the episode, Betty and Veronica, they, they patch things up and they agree that they'll never let another boy come between them. On to the medias of the storylines, the murder of who killed Jason Blossom. And this is kind of continuing with uh, Cheryl. Now I wants to get to the bottom of it. You know, she's like, I'm going to find out who killed my fucking brother. And she's kind of, you know, pissing at that. I, I, I kind of like Cheryl in this episode because she kind of came out of her shell. You know, the, the pilot, you know, she's kind of a bitch. And she's kind of, you know, says it, these, you know, sassy things and whatnot. And I was... I was liking, but she seemed like she was holding back, and I think that's because you know she was getting trying to get over the you know the disappearance of her brother. Now he's dead, and it kind of breaks that shell. So now she's 
She's not as drained. She's like trying to find out who killed her brother. You know, and there's some shade thrown on her because people were like, hey, you got some explaining to do here, redhead. You know, why don't you tell us why you said he fell out of the, out of the boat? She tries to co concoct this story. And, you know, it's like he fell out of the boat. I guess someone shot him down, down the river. And, yeah, I like the scene with, you know, she's hanging out with Archie in, you know, biology. And they have to dissect the problem. And Archie's like, you want me to handle this? She goes, oh, what? Because my brother is probably being dissected right now as we speak? Meh, I got it. <laughs> yeah, I like it. But I don't, you know, how she, you know, she, her character is just, it's, she's like, I guess it's like she's not altogether there. But she's still fucking awesome. <laughs> it's cool. Uh, at the end of the episode, uh, she sees Archie running around in her brother's uh, jersey. And she starts, you know, hallucinating that it's her brother. And then she has a freak out, runs off the field. And, you know, uh, Veronica, like, goes to comfort her. And she's like, you know, it wasn't supposed to be this. He wasn't, he was supposed to come back. And uh, we'll get into that when I get into the theories. So story-wise, that's basically uh, what we have for this episode. Uh, like I said, they, we did get to see some more of some of the other characters. Uh, Jughead especially. We, you know, in the first episode, he, you, you kind of see him in the background a, a few times. And, you, you know, he's the one narrating. And then at the end, he has a little scene with Archie in this one. There's more. You know, you find out he's basically a loner who was into writing. He had a, him and Archie were friends for a long time. They had a falling out. Uh, now uh, Jughead finds out that Archie was screwing Mrs. Grundy. And um, Archie says, yeah, and um, also we were there when the guy got shot. And now Jughead's like, holy shit. And I like his character. He's like... Uh, um, and, uh, you know, I guess he's like the sage of wisdom in this show. And I, I think the, the kid playing him is doing a good job with that. You know, it, yeah, it's, uh, he's supposed to be a teenager, but I guess he's wise beyond his age. And I think it's not just because the actor playing him is in his 20s, but also I think the actor himself is playing in a way that, you, you know, you're looking at this kid who's playing a 20-year-old playing a 15-year-old, but he seems like he's got the wisdom of, I don't know, something. 60-year-old or 70-year-old or some shit like that. Uh, also, uh, Cole Sprouse, I think his name. I didn't realize this until I Googled him a little later that he was on that uh, show, uh, The Sweet Life of uh, Who's In What's-His-Name, you know, the, where the kids lived in the hotel. And I was like, oh, I used... I can't remember when I watched it, you know, because it's Disney Channel, and of course, I'm not that age demographic at all. But I think there was like the yogurt shop that I go to that plays nothing but Disney, so I, get, I think I just sort of haphazardly saw it there. But Good to see that at least one of those kids is getting work. Zach and Corey, yeah, he was one of them. Which one? I don't know. <laughs> I wasn't that much into it. But, uh, yeah, so he did a I liked how they, we got to see more of Jughead, and we got to see more of uh, Luke Perry's character, you know, uh, um, Archie's dad giving him, you know, some good advice. And uh, Reggie, we've got to see more of him. And Wow, they're going full douche with that guy. <laughs> you know, Reggie's, Reggie's my team. I wanted him to knock uh, Archie aside and take Betty and Veronica, which isn't going to happen because they're never going to let a boy become, uh, come between the two of them ever again. Yeah, they go there. They're like this. They're double chocolate and old-fashioned vanilla, which... <laughs> Uh, I had a laugh about that because Betty's just old fashioned vanilla and I guess Veronica's the double chocolate, you know. Wow. It seems like you know, a racist and a condescending uh <laughs> remarks all in one. But yeah. Uh also we got Kevin, I think I complained last episode he came off as a nineties sitcom uh, uh gay character, you know, that a gay character from the nineties on a sitcom. Well, this one, they're kind of fleshing him out, and he's not, uh, his arc is basically he's an asshole. <laughs> he's talking about Moose, how Moose is on this different part of the gay spectrum, and he doesn't want anything to do with him. It's like, oh, I just kind of wish he'd stay in the closet. 
And we're also supposed to be shocked because it reminds Betty that Veronica went into the closet with uh, uh, Archie. But I'm I'm like, oh, wow, what an asshole. Because it's like, that that's what he thinks of Moose. Moose should stay in the closet. What an asshole. But like I said, I wanted to see more. So I guess that's his character arc. He's an asshole. So, uh... Last thing, I guess, with the Jason Blossom thing, of course, was that uh, Cheryl has been arrested for that uh, because, like I said, she made up that thing about her falling out of the boat and people have questions about it. And then, of course, they found out through the autopsy that uh, Jason didn't die on the 4th of July. And I think we'll just kind of move into theories from here. So, uh, last week, like I said, as far as suspects go, I think that they've eliminated Mrs. Grundy, and they've eliminated Archie, and I thought Cheryl was a red herring, and I thought Jason himself was a red herring in that the bullet was meant for Cheryl. Now, given the new information for this episode, I think that theory is uh, sank. It's, nope, it's not going to work because he didn't die on the 4th of July, meaning he wasn't some sniper or someone coming up with a gun. You know, uh, basically, I he probably did fall out of the, well, no, he didn't fall out of the boat. First thing with that, uh, Cheryl, after she freaks out, thinking she's seen her dead brother, she goes into the uh, gym locker and she's crying and Veronica's talking to her. She said he he was supposed to come back, I think. And basically, I think that Jason faked his own death. Or at least that was the idea. The two of them were going to go out there, and there was going to be an accident. And then they were never going to see Jason again. I think that's what the plan was. So with that, um, yeah. So once again, I think Cheryl is a redhead. Especially seeing how they arrested her in this episode. You know, classic redhead. Sorry, red herring, red herring. So many redheads on this show. But like I said, she's a red herring. Uh, I don't know exactly why he wanted to fake his own death just to get away from his parents or away from Betty's mother, who's a complete bitch. But uh, yeah, I think they were trying to fake his death. And as he was, you know, taking a stroll in the woods, do 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 do, going on his way, probably go find a, whatever car they stashed so he could leave Riverdale. That's when whoever killed him uh, captured him. Because they had an autopsy and saying, like like I said, he didn't die on the 4th of July. And I think the coroner was talking about how his body had been uh, bound, like with rope. So basically he was killed later. Maybe even tortured. And, you know, this when this scene played out, Betty's mother was in there. And that, that kind of raises the uh, suspect level on... Um, for me, because I was thinking, hmm, you know, originally I was thinking, you know, Betty's whole family, they're going to be, you know, blonde herrings, if you will. You know, there's going to be all this sort of speculation on them because, you know, Jason ruined their daughter's life and, you know, the mother hates him and then people think, you know, Polly's crazy and then maybe people would think it was Betty and I'm thinking, like, the father's still in the mix. But this one really did raise it with the, the mother. I mean, why was she with the coroner? And she bribes the coroner at one point. Because I was thinking, it's like, is Betty, Betty's mother supposed to be a reporter? Because they talked about how the two of them were going to be working late on account of the murder. And I'm thinking, okay, they're not policemen. Uh, what does it mean, like, they're journalists? And, you know, because there's all this coverage in Riverdale, because that's kind of what the mother made it sound like. So maybe that's why she bribed the coroner to get the dirt on the autopsy. But part of me thinks maybe she was bribing the coroner so certain elements of the autopsy, which would point a finger at her, her husband, or Polly, her crazy daughter, were left out. But we'll have to see with that. Like, I'm, is she a reporter? I don't know. If she's a porn, it kind of makes sense she'd be in there. But if she's not, keep that in mind. So now, like I said, that's kind of where I am thinking with the, the murder mystery. There are a few other mysteries now on account of this episode. One, we have what was the 4th of July shot? Because 
uh, if Jason didn't die on the 4th of July, the shot that Archie and Miss Grundy heard was not the, the kill shot. Uh, it could have just have been like when, you know, uh, Jason is strolling along. And someone's like, you're coming with me. And Jason's like, no, I'm not. <sighs> Warning shot into the trees. And it's like, hey, you're coming with me. Maybe it's uh, somewhat connected to the murder in a different way. I don't know. So we'll have to see with that. And who fired that shot? Uh, also, the, really, I think we have to sort of ask, like, what the hell did happen with him and uh, Polly? I mean, why did they break it up? Why did both sides want to keep it a secret? Because we see Cheryl, she's trying to pump Betty for, for information. And, you know... Both of them like, no, our parents really never said why they broke up. But, you know, there's some, there's some shit going on with that. And uh, one thing I'm going to say, though, now that we know that that uh, one shot was not the kill shot, I think Miss Grundy is uh, back as one of my suspects. I think that maybe she had a uh, thing for redheads. Started out with Jason. And then... Uh, you know, I guess he had feelings for someone else. We know who I'm talking about there. Miss Grundy didn't take that too uh, too kindly. And she tried getting it on with Archie. That didn't work out. She still wanted, you know, Jason. Or maybe he was blackmailing her. And yeah, so she's still a suspect in my eye. And uh, that's where we're going to leave it on this episode.